Um, I wanted to make sure that we made an announcement today that we, our office is suing the Arizona Board of Regents uh, based um, not only on their tuition setting policy as it relates to uh, DACA recipients, but more importantly, and we were looking at this issue, um, one thing I kept coming back to is why is tuition so high here to begin with? And as our lawyers started looking at this issue, um, some difficult facts came out, some maybe unexplainable facts. And so we are suing the Board of Regents to have them justify why tuition near, is, is not nearly as free as possible. Our Arizona Constitution requires that tuition be nearly as free as possible. So if we're gonna have a debate and a discussion about making education accessible and affordable, we should make sure it's accessible and affordable to everyone. Okay. Are there any points that your office has made uh, to the Board of Regents that you can tell us about? Well, if, if you read the lawsuit, one of the most important things is that the, the Board of Regents have come up with a formula that relies on three primary factors. They, they tend to look at affordability. They look at what other universities, state universities are charging other states. They look at medium income, and they also look at the availability of student loans and other aid. And so as you read our Constitution, in Article 11, it clearly states that education is supposed to be nearly as free as possible. Nowhere in there does it say the Board of Regents or the universities are supposed to consider how much how much loans someone may get or what they're, they're charging at the University of Michigan. You know, frankly, I feel, feel like they are using the wrong criteria. So we want to get the Regents into court and to have them explain why tuition is not as nearly as free as possible as the Constitution requires. Okay, so let's talk about in 2007 the state Supreme Court said the question of was what is nearly instruction being as nearly free as possible was more of a political question with beyond the view of the courts. Tell me how this lawsuit differs from, from what the Supreme Court rejected in Cronco. Well, what we are looking at here is not the amount of funding or what or we're not alleging or we're not saying what that amount of tuition should be. What we are saying is the factors and criteria that the Board of Regents what they are using to come up with that formula to set tuition here in Arizona is unconstitutional. It has no basis in making education as nearly as free as possible. And I will tell you, as a middle class parent of two high school girls, I, I, you go to volleyball games, you go to softball games, basketball games, you talk to other parents, and the same thing keeps coming up. Why is school so expensive here in Arizona? And I will tell you, I don't want to age myself, but when I was at Arizona State University, tuition was about six twenty-five, dollars and now it's more than $10,000. And so when our lawyers started looking at this issue, one of the things that, that jumped out at me was tuition has risen at our state universities nine to ten times faster than the rate of inflation. And I know sometimes you hear the universities blaming that on budget cuts, but we looked at the numbers, and if you look at the amount that the legislature has cut over the last, since 2008, um, it's, it's a significant amount, 300, about 380 million. But when you look at what the universities have gotten in, um, an increased revenue based on these increased tuition, it's about $1.5 billion. So in other words, even though there's been cuts, the amount that they're collecting in revenues has increased four times. So to answer your question, once again, is we're not saying, we're not arguing that there needs to be a specific amount of tuition. What we are saying is the formula that they are using is not consistent with nearly as free as possible. Okay. Because what they're focusing on is making it affordable and they're considering outside factors, including things like financial aid and loans. And we don't think they should be considering that. Okay, but, but we're still down to the question of why haven't you named the legislature here? Because whether you believe that the, the, the amount taken in is more, if there are more students there also, which you also have to factor in. But the fact is, that the legislature would seem that constitutional provision doesn't just apply to the regents. That would also apply to the legislature. Why aren't you suing the legislature? Well, we have a vehicle right now in front of us as a result of the Board of Regents at actions uh, recently in dealing with the, the way they've set tuition in the DACA case. That has provided us a vehicle to look at the way the Board of Regents are, is, is setting tuition in general. So first and foremost, we have a vehicle, so we believe that, that gives us standing to challenge us. So the first question would be legally is whether we have that, that standing, that ability with standing or not. But the second thing, and, and maybe most importantly, is, is that the Board of Regents, they've, they've opened up this discussion. And so when they talk about accessibility, when they talk about access, when they talk about affordability, those are things that are not in the Constitution, they are not in the statutes. And what we want to do is make sure they come back to those first principles, including the constitutional principles of being nearly as free as possible. So one of the ways you do that is by looking at actual costs. So we want to know when the, when the Board of Regents is setting tuition for our three major
major universities here, how are they coming up with that cost figure? Or what are those actual costs? So we need to know that by looking at the information that they're using. Second of all, um, I can challenge the formula. Because I look at the formula, the Board of Regents, what they're using, and that formula is inconsistent with the Constitution. And that's why our focus is here today on what the Board of Regents is doing and how they're setting tuition and not some other party. And you know, it, so let's talk about the DACA happening. Is anybody else going to ask a question besides yeah, you, Howie? Yes. Kind of, yes. What kind of remedies is your office looking for? We we want to um, we want the Board of Regents to ensure that any formula they use to set tuition here is, in Arizona is based on actual costs and considers or goes with make sure that they abide by that principle of making education nearly as free as possible. So, sorry, when, when they, when they, wait, when, when the regents are using these factors that are in their official policies, looking at, you know, what, what the tuition is of other universities, like the University of Michigan, University of Alabama, when they're looking at how much student aid is available, including loans, we think that's the wrong focus. They're looking at the wrong thing. What they should be focusing on is how do we make this nearly as free as possible? Well, I think that's an interesting question, Howie. I mean, I'm not going to speculate as to what the regents may or may not do or what formula may or may not be necessary, because quite frankly, I, once again, I would put this back on the regents that they've, and the university presidents, that they have opened up, they're the ones that opened up the can of worms. So when they talk about accessibility, when they talk about affordability, my first question is, well, how much does it actually cost? So I think before we start saying how much tuition should or shouldn't be, we want to know what the costs are. We want to make sure that the Board of Regents is using a formula that's consistent with our Constitution. And they're not focused on what the University of Michigan is charging. They're worried about how much Arizona taxpayers are paying to subsidize our universities. Yeah. 